Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being part of the SHM Global Value Chain Program. While we await Honorable Minister, we would like to begin with the conversation. We have with us uh, today joining us Sri Darshan Hiranandani, Chairman, SHM National Council, Hydrocarbon and Petrochemicals. He is Managing Director of Hiranandani Group and CEO H Energy. He is also joined in by Mr. Rajiv Sikka. He is CEO Indian Oil Adani Gas, a member of SHM family. Uh, we have the presence of Mr. Himanshu Priyadarshi, PepsiCo Director, Public Policy and Government Affairs. And joining him, we have Mr. Debashri Datta Gupta, Chairman, SHM Healthcare Sub Council East. He is Managing Director of one of the oldest pharmaceutical manufacturing company in this part of the world. MD is MD East India Pharmaceuticals. We have the privilege of having presence of Mr. Karan Agarwal, co-chairman SHM National Council of SEZ's Industrial Parks, and he has been guiding SHM a lot in the domain of SEZ's and Industrial Park. I'm privileged and honored that our chairman, Mr. Ravi Agarwal, who's heading the Eastern Region for SHM, is with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we will start a little conversation and uh, interact with our eminent panelists here, take their inputs, and once the Honorable Minister is there with us, we will take forward the agenda of today's discussion. And in this, meanwhile, in this process, I will invite the panelists or the audience who are there with us to put down their thoughts, raise your hands, or put something in the chat box if you would like our eminent panelists to uh, talk about. So I would start the conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Darshan Hiranandani. Sir, you have been present in West Bengal. You have experience. So for the benefit of audience and for the benefit of the industry members who are there on panel with you, if you would like to share something about your experiences of being uh, in, the, in the West Bengal and in this part of the country. So, um, th thank you, Parminder. I think, um, uh, you know, uh, West Bengal is in some sense a, a forgotten land for industry and something that uh, people have wished away for a while, except for people who've stuck back. And there is a huge amount of potential. Uh, the potential is for several reasons. One is West Bengal's own population is large. Second is, um, as we all know, there is massive amounts of infrastructure development happening in East and Northeast of India. And all that infrastructure will go to waste if we don't ultimately get industry employment and benefits to all the end, end people that are out there and whether uh, to, the, to the consumers of Bengal. So I think this whole discussion is around uh, A, pointing out to the government some of the pain areas that people are going through and possibly how to resolve them. And of course, the second uh, thought process is, are there any big picture holistic trajectory points that we can bring forth, which could be uh, big game changers to, um, uh, in terms of the thought process that can bring a paradigm shift to how Bengal is perceived from outside, because the people who are in Bengal, established industrialists, they continue growing in Bengal. But really, if Bengal has to succeed, it has to compete and attract uh, from all over the world. I'll give you a simple example. Um, we have an industrial park division called Green Base. Uh, Vestas, which is a wind turbine manufacturer, global manufacturer, floated a global tender saying, we want to build a wind turbine uh, manufacturing facility outside China. Four countries were given, I mean, you could, you could be anywhere outside China in, in the South Asia. And four countries participated of or projects, proponents from four countries, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and uh, we decided to participate from our project in Chennai. We successfully won it, and in 12 months, uh, wind turbines are being manufactured, and with that, 20 ancillaries came along. Now, the point was, the point I'm trying to make is, it, it was made possible to happen because we were focused on it, the state government was focused on it, and we made it Everybody made it their mission to see that there was not a cent of or a minute of delay that happened in any area. And this was delivered in the time of COVID. 
Now, the biggest issue and the biggest question that everybody has to ask government is, is it a priority for you? And are you going to take ownership that every investment that is there in the state and every piece of new investment, if it is getting delayed for one minute for any reason that you all can help solving, you all should intervene and not bother about is it private sector, public sector, is it this and that. If it is investment creating jobs in my state, I should take ownership no matter who I am. So uh, I'd like to open with that and maybe uh, people can talk about their suggestions and thoughts. And, uh, you know, if there's a consolidated list at some point, we can, uh, we'll of course share, everybody will share it with the minister as well. But I'd, I'd like to open it up to anybody, uh, you know, with that opening thought to start the chat. Right. Right. I think I would like uh, uh, Karan to come in because Karan has similar experience of uh, uh, being in West Bengal and being in uh, Telangana and everywhere. So the similar thoughts uh, as you have put in. So, uh, Mr. Agarwal, I think I'll just take some inputs from you, uh, Karan ji. Thank you so much. Uh, um, Mr. Darshan, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, whenever we look at uh, bringing a landmark project or the 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 speed is key uh, whoever takes the bait first would be like the early, early birds catches the uh, worm that's the whole approach i think in terms of business also today so um, fortunately we are in a business where we work uh, with companies looking to set up either manufacturing set, uh, facilities or warehouses or distribution centers. And um, we, we see this happening all the time between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu because we are right at the border. Uh, we are in Atibale industrial area. So oftentimes we see that Tamil Nadu uh, takes something which was destined for Karnataka only because of the readiness and the positive approach from the government and also certain incentives. So uh, it's 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 given that whoever acts uh, sooner and is more conducive would get the business, and then uh, that is the key when it comes to policymakers. They need to be a little more um, proactive. And Tamil Nadu, for that matter, has also hired almost I would say fifty MBA graduates from be it ISB or any of the top management companies who are helping industries with everything right from land procurement, identification, incentives, and getting them up and running. A single window clearance is what they have. And it's it's a very, uh, and they are very much accessible. It's one thing to have this machinery ready, but then how do I access that is another. So these guys are all very tech savvy. They are always online. They are always on LinkedIn and other forums wherein any entrepreneur or, or a business looking to expand to Tamil Nadu can easily get in touch with them and then initiate the dialogue. So I think that is something that West Bengal per se um, lacks, if I can say that. So I think that these are things which we need to just work. And this is not rocket science. It's just uh, evolution. Uh, some people are a little ahead of the curve and some are taking their own sweet time. So this is just, uh, but having said that, you'll be happy to note that our second unit uh, is coming up in West Bengal. And I'll a uh, li little later on in our presentation, I'll tell you the reasons why we chose West Bengal over any other state. So with that, I'd like others to also jump in. Thank you. Thank you. That's really very encouraging. You know, your unit is coming up here. So uh, before I just move on, I have a question. When we talk of incentive, it's you know, it's always that uh, everyone talks that incentive in Tamil Nadu or the Telangana are much better or uh, for that matter, Gujarat. So, uh, you know, many of the time the question then comes is that what is so unique about the incentive schemes which these are doing? Because see, the documents are available to everyone. Any any state government can pick the document and see. So what are the special such incentives which catch the eyes of the industry uh, when they opt out for any of these states? Is that a question directed to me? Uh, anyone. I mean, you or uh, uh, anyone would so, like to answer. So if somebody else wants to answer, I'm more than happy. Otherwise, I can jump in. Uh, you can <laughs> continue. Uh, Parminder, I, 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 I'll give my just two cents on that. Um, I personally think 
two two promoter there are two types of uh, uh, investments that happen somebody who has an industrial mindset and somebody who has a real estate mindset an industrial mindset person says i'm bringing jobs so i should get everything else for free or state should support me in getting everything else that's one kind of mindset and that's fine i'm not and there's a real estate mindset where the person says the land has some value i'm not in industry and jobs i'll do my bit and hand it off to whoever is going to come in two parts to the story but i'll tell you the most important part to the story businesses succeed whether you're in a real estate mindset or in your an industrial mindset it only succeeds and you make money when things happen on time so execution speed is the basic determinant of success so if i don't if i invest and i don't get my permission on time it doesn't matter what incentive you have my my business model has gone for a toss after i put my investment and you don't switch on the the discom doesn't inspect my transformer and waits for 5 months to inspect my transformer and switch me on again i have gone for a toss so there are many different elements the most important criteria is not the incentive scheme it's the mindset of ownership that states ownership that the officer there should be dynamic to say ye hamara project hai not ye private sector ka project hai and anything that stops we are going to make it happen but i'll leave it open to other people start processes there. right right i think i'll bring in uh, himanshu because pepsico certainly has a um, uh, a large base all across and their interactions and uh, himanshu being responsible for government affairs has certainly interacted uh, with uh, all the states more or less if i'm not mistaken so himanshu we would like to bring in your thoughts uh, when it comes to you know ease of doing business or the interaction or the approachability um how comfortable and convenient does the industry feel when they engage with the uh, government officials or the state machinery in the other part of the country means uh, so good afternoon all and good afternoon uh, dr chatterjee also for giving us this opportunity as a such a member to be part of this session so i can only say that uh, there are couple of reasons for bengal being a year bengal is the bengal ahead and there are five e's which i can say are important which has created a good good wavelength for bengal is first is economy bengal is always like bengal is ranked as sixth in gdp with estimated growth of 8% second about the ecosystem for a food processing to assure and for a growth of food processing the raw materials plays a major role and because of the good climate favorable climate of bengal we see we see a huge agricultural and horticultural base as compared to other states so the agro commodity and the agro resources and there is a stronger connect from producers from farm to processors and that's how like you know pepsico is having 27000 farmers uh, all across india and then out of 27000 farmers 70% are directly associated with west bengal in bakura and hogli so it means we can you can see the ecosystem the positive ecosystem of food processing company to be in bengal second is obviously its location advantage which because it's it's one of the key strategic plays in which plays important role in the southeast asia market second is 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 of doing business with the shilpa bandhu and the direct approachability with the government officials especially with wbidc or labor we feel that there is a ease of doing business and there there's a lot of approvals like you know means in our case we have experienced i don't know about others but in our experience has been that the approvals has been really a really fast track basis and every every official like either we it be chief secretary sir or uh, anybody even honorable minister has visited our plant so we have always got support like a positive support for west bengal government and that is one of the reason like you know why pepsi has invested 800 crore in the state and and generated approximately 2000 direct and indirect employment third e is like you know education because bengal has a literacy rate of 76% so it gives an added advantage for the companies to hire good talent from west bengal all across you know the fourth is empowerment because we feel that means when we compare other states women empowerment is more in west bengal that's what we have felt we have felt and the active participation of women for for workforce has really been helpful to the industry in creating additional manpower and even pepsico we are working with lot of uh, lot of women farmers in in generating like you know re revenue for their stream and as well as they 
becoming our potato growers because we generate a lot of we procure a lot of potatoes from west bengal so because of this ease this five ease i think west bengal has a positive ecosystem but going without saying like you know on terms of incentive when we are talking about the incentive phase we feel that west bengal has really role means came out with this west bengal industrial promotion board which is which is an active ray of hope, hope for all of us but incentives make we can make it more competitive because for global companies when they want to establish any plant or any when they want to do any kind of investment in any kind of state from global taking global approval we need to give a competitive advantage and as well as a comparative analysis so as to showcase that project you know so that's how incentive is is obviously an important factor for companies to continue investing in those states and continue investing for us quality like when we talk about value chain the global requirement of food products from india has really like it has a wrong future future because as now we have only 10% of food processing in india as compared to raw material availability so if we have we are seeing this 90% left over then obviously like we need more players and we need more machines for those investment incentives play a major role for uh, creating a strength, strength strengthening the robust system Uh, right thank you um, uh, thank you it is very encouraging to learn that you know if you are supporting a uh, woman entrepreneur there and you are supporting the woman farmer and this uh, th there's a lot of commitment which is anyway everyone knows pepsico is very committed so is there any specific program which you are running for the women uh, entrepreneurs in west bengal or is it just uh, this growing bit of it uh, growing the potatoes So we we are working a complete livelihood program in partnership with West A in 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 those regions like you know West Bangura, Bakura, Bakura, Bardhaman, Bardhaman. Yeah. Those regions we are doing a long program where mm -hmm. we want to create like you know we we want to create near about fifteen hundred farmers association shortly. Mm -hmm. So we can give more detail on this whole USA program which we are doing for the livelihood for women farmers. Okay, that's really wonderful because these are quite uh, uh, interior uh, locations, and you know, and, uh, so uh, giving them the opportunity that's uh, that's really excellent. I would, uh, I, since it's almost uh, uh, okay, we are fortunate enough that uh, Honorable Minister Sir has uh, joined us. Uh, so I think we will just welcome him and then start uh, in the formal uh, way as we had planned. so uh, here we go uh, honorable minister sir namaskar thank you so much for joining uh, we have privilege uh, of having eminent leaders across the country who are sitting in various location mumbai delhi hyderabad who have joined us from their respective locations uh, may i take this opportunity and welcome you uh, and introduce you that we have today Uh, Mr. Ravi Agarwal, Chairman, SHM Eastern Region. We have Sri Darshan Hiranandani, Chairman, SHM National Council Hydrocarbon and Petrochemicals. He is Managing Director of Hiranandani Group and CEO of H Energy, having in investments and interest in West Bengal. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Sikka, CEO Indian Oil Adani Gas. Mr. Himanshu Priyadarshi, we were speaking to him, sir, PepsiCo Director, Public and uh, Policy, Public Policy and Government Affairs. Mr. Devashree Datta Gupta, Chairman, SHM uh, Healthcare Council, and he is MD East India Pharmaceutical. And joining him, we have Mr. Karan Agarwal, Co-Chairman, SHM National Council of SEZs and Industrial Parks, who has been guiding us uh, along uh, across the country with regard to SEZs. to start with the discussion with honorable minister sir may i first invite mr ravi agarwal chairman sochm eastern region and the director neomatelex for his welcome remark on behalf of sochm family over to you mr agarwal thank you parminda ji thank you namaste dada uh, hello ravi <laughs> so dr patho chatterji distinguished guest eminent panelist ladies and gentlemen a very warm welcome to all of you it's a great honor for me to be part of this wonderful program global value chain forward and backward integration which aims to cover a wide array of subjects relating to industry and business india of today has already geared up to bring about changes that will positively impact the way of doing business as part of this evolving landscape 
the journey ahead is filled with new opportunities and possibilities. In this backdrop of our state of West Bengal has carved a unique developmental story for itself by playing a pivotal role in supporting the drive towards India's goal of $5.5 trillion economy. In this connection, I must mention about our Honorable Chief Minister Silmati Mamta Banerjee, who has determinedly placed West Bengal in the global map of industrialization. Today, Bengal has emerged as a highly developed state embellished with industrial, entrepreneurial opportunities and positive investment climate. Parthu Babu, we are so glad that you have been able to carry forward our, her vision of new and improved Bengal by implementing various initiatives as the Honorable Minister of Industry, Commerce and Enterprises. You have played an important role in inviting industries from all over the country and abroad while supporting the existing business in the state. Please allow me to share some few key attributes about West Bengal. The geographical position of this state serves as a gateway to Southeast Asia and beyond. The international boundaries with Bangladesh, Bhutan and Nepal along with two international airports, ports and an excellent rail network provides for excellent connectivity from this part of the country. Bengal is endowed with the abundant natural resources. Highest producer of rice and vegetable of the country accounts for more than 50% of raw jute production in India. The state is also the second largest producer of tea in India, with the distinction of producing the world-renowned Darjeeling tea. These reflect the latent potential of this state. West Bengal's total value of merchandise export was recorded at $9.5 billion. Top export commodities include petroleum products, metals, leather goods, agriculture produce, marine products, jewelry, plastic, chemicals, etc. Bengal is also a hub for the major IT and IT's company from all over the globe. With continued investments in this sector over the past several years, with very high quality of human resources, the state is automatically a natural choice of large IT and IT companies. Dr. Chatterjee, Pathoda, I would once again like to assure you that SOCHM Eastern Region Council is committed to support the strengthening of business and promote industrial partnership in this region. We are certain that under your dynamic leadership, the industries in Bengal will continue to thrive impactfully while helping the economy to achieve accelerated growth in the days ahead. With these few words, I wish to wholeheartedly thank Dr. Patho Chatterjee for taking time out from his busy schedule to be with us today. Let me welcome all of you once again and wish this program a grand success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Raviji, uh, for setting the tone and the agenda of the meeting and mentioning the industry experience of uh, excellent industrial infrastructure and the logistic development, which has taken over the period of time. Uh, may I now invite Mr. Debashri Datta Gupta, having interest in the pharma sector, to present his thoughts and his inputs on the pharma sector for strengthening the global value chains. Over to you, Mr. Datta Gupta. Uh, thank you. Uh... Paminda Ma'am, uh, Honorable Minister, Dr. Patho Chatterjee and all the eminent uh, speakers here, including the chairman of uh, different uh, councils and sub-councils of ASOCHEM. Uh, so what, uh, you know, as Bengal uh, has always been regarded as the birthplace of the pharmaceutical industry, if you take uh, the beginning of uh, Bengal chemicals back, back in 1901, uh, Yes, there are players in Bengal and uh, for example, if you take our uh, example, sir, we have been in uh, Bengal and operating out of Bengal for the last 85 years. Uh, we are growing and so are the other pharmaceutical companies that are present uh, in, in West Bengal and operating out of West Bengal. Uh, so just I'll be very uh, you know, specific and very brief about uh, a particular figure which I was looking at. Um, so, if you take a look at uh, you know, the global or the India's um, exports in pharmaceuticals in 19, 20, 19 and 20, 
it was somewhere around 1 lakh uh, 17000 uh, crore rupees and uh, in that west bengal's uh, contribution was around 480 crore rupees now uh, i have always been an optimistic uh, person and this is shows that what kind of scope the companies in west bengal we have uh, to take that uh, export market our plants which are present in bengal although we are part of the msme sector uh, we confirm to all legal requirements all cgmp requirements uh, we upgrade from time to time and uh, you know there there is no uh, question as to why uh, you know, we won't able to show the other uh, big manufacturers all over india to come to bengal and operate of course we would require a lot of help uh, from the government i know that uh, under the leadership of our uh, chief minister and uh, honorable minister dr partha chatterjee who was you know he knows industry you know you know, you know the best like anybody you know he knows what the industries are all about and with everybody's help and support i just believe and hope that we uh, attract bigger pharmaceutical uh, manufacturers back into bengal uh, not for the revenue part because we have a huge amount of hr potentiality from bengal now if you see the graduates in uh, in, in chemical technology chemical engineers biotechnologists pharmacists uh, gaining out of pharmacy colleges in bengal or the bigger universities like Jadhopur University and Calcutta University, extremely high quality HR. And uh, not only in Bengal, they are operating everywhere in the world. If you see very, very high ranking um, you know, pharmacists and biotechnologists, um, you will find many of them are graduates from Calcutta University and Jadhopur University. So not only uh, the when it comes to manufacturing of pharmaceutical products, but Bengal's contribution towards HR in this field is extremely high and they're high quality professionals. So what I would of course be hopeful that, uh, you know, we, the companies who are in West Bengal, uh, you know, we can act as uh, an indicator to the other bigger manufacturers uh, all over India to come and uh, manufacture in Bengal. And of course, I'm very, very sure that our government is extremely aggressive in uh, making sure that, uh, you know, they are here and they feel comfortable while working in Bengal. So uh, that is what uh, I think. And uh, my vision is to see uh, Bengal back in the pharmaceutical manufacturing radar in India in a much bigger way. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh that was really an excellent uh, thought put forward by you. Uh, I would move the conversation from the pharmaceutical domain to the agriculture food processing. And I think I'll go back to Mr. Himanshu Priyadarshi. Uh, Himanshu, you are representing PepsiCo, having a significant presence in West Bengal and the other parts of the country. We would like to have your thoughts once again uh, to sh uh, to share in front of Honorable Minister the plan of PepsiCo and the kind of work you are doing. Over to you. So thank you, Asachem, for uh, giving PepsiCo as an opportunity, and thank you, Parthada, that you have visited our plant also, PepsiCo, and this will be like you know whenever you have taken charge of industries ministry, we always become more positive and more optimistic that yeah there will be some better future coming up. So I'll start like, you know, food processing sector, as you are aware, like, you know, food processing yesterday also on the social media, there has been a widespread trend on Indian food, spices and flavor, where a lot of people like from in US also, they have quoted that India is having like the flavors and spices, which is as diverse as a country itself. So food processing is obviously a major sector, which plays a major role in the whole value chain. And strangely, food processing currently is only 10% of the food which are being processed and traded now. So we have another future, like 90% of caveat, it is still left out in food processing. Secondly, it's one of the major labor intensive industry, if we say, because 11.3% of the total manufacturing sector, food processing alone contributes and uh, is accounted as 11.3% of the total workforce, which are into whole industries, you know. So again, from employment point of view, from value chain point of view, it plays a very major role in terms of creating export potential, cold chain, raw material procurement, and in, in all dynamics. Now coming to West Bengal, you know, like uh, I was telling before Sir came, is the reasons for Bengal being Agia Bengal is Bengal surges ahead are because of five E's. One is economy because it's the it's sixth in GDP and estimated growth of 8%. Uh, 
Second is about ecosystem. What our colleague was also mentioning about the ecosystem, favorable climate and favorable agriculture and food processing procurement place. So it becomes an advantage for processors to directly produce from directly procure and from the producers, you know. So it's it's a strong connect between farm to fourth model if we talk about. So and this is one of the incentive for a lot of food processing companies coming to West Bengal and using it like, you know, and taking raw materials directly from them. Even from PepsiCo point of view, sir, like out of 27,000 farmers in 14 states where PepsiCo works, 70% alone, we are associated with 70% of the farmers in West Bengal. In the region like Bakura, Hugli, Purva Bardhavan, those are major clusters from where like we procure potatoes. Uh, so, so that is one, one advantage. Second, on the, on the ease of doing business, if we talk about ease of doing business is really favorable because WBIDC and Shilpa Bandhu and in, in, in terms of single window clearances. So this has always been very supporting factor for PepsiCo. And that is the reason. As a result, PepsiCo itself has invested approximately 800 crore in the state and generated 2000 indirect and direct employment. And our plant is located in Havra, which is one of the largest manufacturing plant like in, in India as well as one of like in a in lot of lot of other sectors. The third is education because sir itself is uh, is coming as a HR manager, like I was reading somewhere with the HR background. So, so he has really like, you know, rightly stressed upon the education system. And that's how we have been seeing the literacy rate is 76% in West Bengal as compared to other states. And the last E is empowerment. We have been seeing that West Bengal is one of the states where women entrepreneurs and women workforce are primarily being an additional manpower for the industries. And that's how it has led and motivated PepsiCo also to work with the uh, USAID and to create livelihood, complete livelihood for women farmers and to train them and to procure from them is to create the whole story for women farmers and women livelihood programs to approximately 1500 farmers in, in those clusters, you know, and this is a very strong program. So this is the last E, which I would say few humble submissions are like if, if uh, it's a promising this thing to see that, you know, once you have taken the charge now West Bengal Industrial Policy Promotion Board has been constituted. Now the request will be like, you know, because investments require a lot of competitive advantage when we talk about the global partners and other companies to invest in food quality, to invest in machinery and to create the whole investment plan. So it would be better like, you know, the, the former incentive which were already approved by WBIDC if it can be given to, to the companies who, whose incentives were already approved Considering this COVID environment, it will help them a lot, like, you know, strengthening their own system and creating more and more expansion plan in those or those regions, you know. And the second point is like India, means which I would really request, like, you know, West Bengal to help us that the GST rates of packaged foods is largely one of the one of the largest across the globe. Like none of the countries in the globe have 12% GST rate on branded and packaged food products. And after COVID, we are seeing that consumers are moving towards more packaged and processed foods as compared to raw materials. So it will be really helpful, like, you know, if West Bengal can lead a voice in, in tax rationalization so that the, the deficit of 5% in non-branded and 12% in branded. So this is very, this is ambiguous. And here this tax rationalization can help industries more to invest it further and directly it, it links to the farmers also in terms of procurement process. So these are my humble submissions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Priyadarshi. Uh, uh, Mr. Ravi Agarwal was speaking a while back about the strategic location and the significance of the logistics in the region. So I would like to invite Mr. Karan Agarwal, he's our co-chairman for National Council of SEZs and Industrial Parks, to share his thoughts. Uh, he has uh, active interest in the state and is uh, an expert in logistics and the warehousing. Over to you, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'd like to start by uh, uh, sending my greetings to uh, the Honorable Minister. Uh, the fact that most of the panelists are referring to you as Dada speaks about the fact that how approachable you are. And I wish to take the same liberty, Dada. Uh, and also thank you, uh, Asuchem, for giving me uh, the opportunity to speak uh, on this very relevant topic. Um, 
um i would like to start with um talking about global value chain as a very uh, critical um strategy to stand out not only as a region but as a country so uh, um what is very very relevant today when you want to make a mark uh, as a as a hub for global value chain is your network and connectivity and when i say network and connectivity i am talking more than just your internet connectivity and your mobile network um i'm talking more about um the network when it comes to roadways the ports the waterways if we look at west bengal location and the kind of road works that we have uh, starting from um, um west bengal all the way to assam and beyond uh, even to myanmar and and the water bodies uh, we have access to ports to bangladesh uh, and also there's a huge uh, influx of work when it comes to making waterways uh, a viable option of transportation so uh, given all this i think there is no other location in india which can have such a big catchment area with a well developed network of roads uh, railways as well as water water bodies uh, waterways um, as a result what has happened is if you look at this entire cluster uh, there is a huge manufacturing cluster already existing in in northeast um, because of calcutta or west bengal being the gateway to it um, there is enough and more Uh, manufacturing companies having their base in west bengal be it uh, auto sector be it fmcg be it uh, engineering uh, be it steel sector they are all happy to be there and they are going much beyond that also in northeast um, and also if we look at the recent growth when it comes to warehousing particularly the uh, kolkata has become a warehousing hub for the east um, and i'm sure Mr. Hiran and Nani can vouch for it. Um, there is a huge demand for grade A warehouses uh, in in the eastern region. Uh, again, starting from Kolkata, uh, the Kolkata Bombay Highway is flooded with logistic parks, warehousing parks, industrial parks, and the demand is almost unlimited. And then we also have our friendly neighbor in the form of Bangladesh, which is a huge uh, potential that. Um, west bengal can piggy back on and also help in the growth um now bangladesh in textile manufacturer in the world it is also the number 3 rice manufacturer in the world or no producer in the world the number 3 garlic producer in the world and the number 7 potato manufacturer in the world producer in the world and west bengal when it comes to uh, its standing in terms of india it's the number 1 jute producer in india it's the number one leather producer in india it is the number two tea producer in india it is the number five steel producer in india and uh, sixth when it comes to petrochemicals now how we uh, can help uh, i'm sure as asochem uh, we can help companies trying to look for uh, land in to set up their facilities in 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 calcutta asochem with its all all the connections can help them avail those lands avail the facilities uh, incentives and also um, be a advocate for the policies uh, which can be much more favorable so that uh, it becomes the preferred destination when it comes to industries um, in my personal capacity i'd like to also uh, let uh, dada know that even though we are based out of bangalore our second unit is actually coming up in west bengal uh, in rani hati so we ourselves are going live in west bengal very soon hopefully by january our second unit would be live uh, and we are very eager to make a mark there uh, and also help other companies which are setting up there help them build the infrastructure to make the most of the potential and opportunity available there uh, with that i'd like to uh conclude and also um thank you so much wish to be in touch with everybody thank you so much again
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Agarwal, for putting in your thoughts and sharing your plan of uh, having your footprints in the state. Uh, we are talking about the infrastructure. So certainly the oil and gas sector becomes very, very critical and relevant when it comes to the growth and the economy of our region. So I would like to invite the thoughts of Mr. Rajiv Sekha. He's the CEO of Indian Oil Adani uh, Corporate here. So uh, Mr. Sekha, over to you for your inputs on uh, the economic development of the region, the kind of growth you have seen, and how more we can do to ensure the global value chain uh, uh, is strengthened from uh, and the corporates and or the companies from here are able to part be part of it. Over to you. Thank you, Parminder ji, uh, respected and honourable uh, Doctor Pathoda Patho Chatterjee sir, all distinguished. Panelist with me today, Ravi ji, Deepak ji, Devashri Datta Gupta ji, Himanshu Pradarshi ji, Karan Agarwal ji, Darshan Hiranandani ji, and everyone who is there. My warm wishes to you. I'm very happy to see that this kind of uh, uh, forum has been created by Ashokam, and with a very diverse kind of people, the presence, I'm really impressed. And this makes it very meaningful for me to not only understand, but also contribute. So many thanks to SOCHAM for making this happen. Now, why West Bengal? If I may say the, the GDP, which one of my predecessors has also spoken about that, the GDP, which is a very handsome GDP of around 8%, and the population, the demographic advantage which it gives, the middle class, values and the middle class i would say the the the, the population and the culture which thrives in uh, bengal which looks very very uh, what i would say attractive to me as an individual and also as an organization as well now the onus is on people like us and organizational leaders who are sitting here and not only sitting here but sitting outside as well on what to do with this good demography and good culture and i would say good entrepreneur activism if i may say can we bring in that now how to do that when to do that that's a challenge for people like us i would say my company i would like to just uh, uh, spend uh, two lines on my company what i'm going to do what we are going to do so that everyone is aware, we are going to create the CNG and PNG, compressed natural gas and pipe natural gas infrastructure for automobiles, for uh, uh, pipe gas for domestic purpose, uh, pipe gas for commercial and industrial customers in the city of Bartman. That is what our mandate is. We are going to build something like 400 plus CNG stations in next eight years and also will be supplying to 10 lakh plus customers the pipe gas as well as our aspiration is uh, our aspiration is to be be a dominant player but Naturally, we will require the support of the state government and the figures which I mentioned are inclusive of other CGD players also. Together, I'm speaking on the behalf of industry. So the outlets are coming in Bergman, where I will be there. Outlets are coming in Calcutta by Bengal Gas. Outlets will be coming in upper portions like Siliguri and all by HPC owned company. So together, we are going to create this kind of CNG, clean energy, if I may say, clean energy, vibrancy, we are going to give. My company, we have already established about 13 CNG stations and we have made a beginning. So far, we have been getting all kind of uh, positive vibes from the state governments and local district authorities. But yes, we'll be requiring faster approvals. That's what our uh, uh, request to the Honorable Minister and other state government officials who are present here. Because our kind of work requires digging of uh, national highways, digging of PWD roads, so that we can create steel and MDP infrastructure. And 
we are only looking for faster approvals and facilitation from the government officials. As far as what we are going to contribute, the numbers I spoke, but how do we get the numbers? We will be requiring so many skilled individuals, which we are very happy to see Bengal is offering to us, semi-skilled and contractors and laborers to do our work. So, so, uh, so this will be what I would say, once we are together, uh, be able to integrate all this, the workers, the contractors, and our desire to build the infrastructure. And of course, then we have to back it up with marketing. So this is what with, uh, will happen. And again, all, this, all the city, uh, CGD players like us who are going to be present there for next seven, eight years, to begin with, they have got the mandate from the regulator. So they will be also creating similar kind of employment opportunities, similar, similar kind of infrastructure creation uh, uh, opportunities, and also there would be marketing. So there would be a lot of facilitation to the overall employment also, and uh, not only economic generation also. And of course, in our kind of work, we have to spend uh, we have to spend money for build uh, for building. Uh, there are capex. There is capex involved. So we'll be spending something like five hundred odd crores in next uh, five six years. And uh, naturally, the local populace and the local ancillary units will also benefit from our infrastructure creation. So I would only uh, sum up. We are looking forward to contribute our bit and uh, with the help of state government, we want to go to next level. So I would like to say in two lines, we have to say to everyone, 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 so we have to say to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, those wonderful lines and very uh, truly uh, you know, speaking your heart out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we were talking about the infrastructure and we have spoken about the sector specific needs. Uh, as a country, when we want to progress towards the next phase of economic growth and differentiate ourselves when it comes to global positioning, it is clear West Bengal will have a crucial role to play. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Darshan Hiranandani, having his interest, his group's interest in energy, data center, construction, and much more, uh, and of course, having presence in Bengal, to share his thoughts. Over to you, Mr. Hiranandani. Thank you, Parminder. Parthoda, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, so, um, I w the, the way I uh, see this event today is we are all here because... Uh, we love Bengal, we care about Bengal, we are invested in Bengal, and we want to see Bengal win. And when we want to see Bengal win, the idea today is to bring to the attention of the Honorable Minister and discuss with people what are a few thoughts uh, across the board. And, and I, can, I can tell you uh, some thoughts that I see uh, that are easy wins. Um, today, when we are trying to attract uh, investment, the best way to attract investment is to have somebody with a good experience speak well about their experience. If you get one PepsiCo who says something good about food processing in his next, not what he says on stage, but what he says off stage to the other people, you will get 10 more PepsiCo's to come and put up food processing units. So it's very important that as we are attracting new investment, we should be very, very nice to people who are already committing their investment and make them succeed because they are our best spokesperson. So I think um, for whether it was right or wrong or whatever, uh, BGBS tried to set that out. But I think it's more important at a lower level that every entrepreneur feels like that and becomes Bengal's messenger. I think that's that's a key criteria. To really make that happen, I think there's a lot to learn because we are setting up industrial parks, data centers all over the country. We've done in Mumbai, we're doing in Tamil Nadu. We've, uh, I just, I'm right now in uh, Noida. We, I've just seen construction of our 1500 crore data center. We've reached halfway and we only bought the land in December. You know, believe it or not, we bought the land in December last year. Today we are on floor three. 
by the end of the year we'll complete it the the shell and core of the building and by next year um uh we'll 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 be have it up and running so i would say that one of the things to learn from certainly what i see in tamil nadu and up uh, in terms of attracting investment is that uh, they have a very very strong single window policy where they don't allow any outsider to experience any troubles so what they do is they tell the outsider you come speak to the industry department we will do everything for you you will not have to meet parthoda you will not have to meet uh, yogi adityanath you will not have to meet anybody we will take care of everything we will switch you on no matter where you want to be switched on and we will make it happen it is our project not your project so i think that mindset has to be created in the industrial department uh, people have to be empowered it has to be measured and there has to be a mission to win once we give two three dynamic officers of the department that mission to win the power to win i think victory is not far away so that's one one part of it that's there another place where i see massively wasted opportunity and in fact karn spoke about it earlier is uh, uh, relating to the waterways but i see it in a little different way dada along the entire hugli we have a almost like a no development zone that's there to develop any project long approvals needed from kolkata port trust but you got 80 kilometers of waterfront uh you can have trade you can have uh, recreation you can have hotels flotels restaurants waterfront people kill for waterfront dubai and singapore are making waterfront every day and we have this land all lying idle uh, i've spoken to kolkata port trust i spoke to inland waterways inland waterways has completely liberalized their policy anybody with a waterfront can make anything they want and just pay them a fee similarly it would be good if the state government works with uh, uh, with kolkata port trust and just opens it up because the economic creation that will happen there across the board doesn't matter in what sector will be really very very large um i i think there's a, a third area where uh, it's a smaller point but i want to bring it up anyways land acquisition is a difficult subject in any part of the country it has nothing to do with bengal one may say because of land sum division it is still more complicated but land acquisition is generally a problem anywhere i personally feel that certainly as karn again mentioned industrial warehousing land is in big demand wherever land is there uh giving restricted ground coverage for industrial land doesn't make sense so where land is available for industry please allow 55% ground coverage don't restrict it to 35 all the other states are allowing it because you're forcing people to buy new land to develop so it's a small change but i think it will double the availability of warehousing logistics and other things which bring in a lot of jobs so it's a small thing but that change can happen very very easily on uh, existing industrial and warehousing land logistics land uses uh, that are there um in all in all uh, as i say there is huge amount of attractiveness so we are 90% of the journey in west bengal to succeed because all the factors are good there is water there is power there is uh, people uh, skilling as as uh, uh, rajiv ji was mentioning mr rajiv sikka huge amount of cng coming huge amount of pipeline coming and patoda you will be surprised companies look after their welders better than their white collar people welders are in short supply in our country and good welders make 50 to 70000 rupees in the oil and gas business per month uh contractors all over the world are looking for skilled welders and you're going to build so much pipeline so many gas connections huge employment potential good potential in the state like that in the oil and gas industry in the logistics industry we should have a, a stakeholder session as to what are the areas that are there and focus on skill development where we do skilling where there is 100% employment generation uh so guaranteed employment for certain skilling and company should commit numbers and we should work together on a program so there is holistic development of the state so these were just few of my initial thoughts uh in terms of how do we make uh an already you know a, a diamond in the rough shine uh and and really win as we move forward so i think all the elements are there once again parthoda thank you so much it's great to see you after so long and hopefully i'll see you in person on tuesday but thank you
Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your thoughts and laying down a framework for how the business should operate, take up the skilling and how they should strengthen the region and the people out here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are well aware of the immense opportunity that state provides and under the able leadership of Honorable Industry Minister, uh, Dr. Partho Chatterjee, the state is taking every possible measure to support industry and to ensure ease of doing business in the state. May I now, along with Chairman Mr. Ravi Agarwal and all the National Committee members who are here, request Honorable Minister Sir to kindly address our August Court audience and share his vision for this state. Over to you, Honorable Minister Sir. Dear uh, presenter, Ravi, distinguished members of SHM, industry friends and other dignitaries. I am delighted to be with you today and greet you all on my personal behalf as well as on behalf of our Honorable Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee. With the peaking global interconnectivity, there is an heuristic need for a state to be in sync with the global economy. The webinar assumes high importance in regard to this theme. In recent times, integration into global value chain is being viewed as a fast track industrialization and development. West Bengal is emerging as a global player in the international market. The readiness and ease of doing business is a positive step in this direction. West Bengal is the forerunner of the country in terms of spirit, density, and access to natural inland waterways, which many of you have spoken on that subject. And is replay is replete with ports and excellent road and rail network and the facility advantage of two international airports as another modern airport in the western industrial belt. The strategic importance of the state is unparalleled. The vicinity of Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, a number of eastern and southeastern countries places the state with the potential to become the gateway for India. The geopolitical alliance and the infrastructure has ensured holistic socio-economic development in the region. State has always been an important business center and this is visible in our GDP growth. It is also visible in our friendly policies and our ranking among states in terms of doing business. The Right to Public Service Act has been successfully implemented and almost all the clearances are time bound. We can be obtained online through our Shilpo Shati portal. At the apex level, West Bengal Industrial Promotion Board has been formed, headed by Chief Minister and evolving our key cabinet colleagues and Chief Secretary and other secretaries of the related departments. West Bengal officers offers infrastructures, the safe environment, skilled manpower. We are 
fortunate in skill development and higher education. We have an excellent record of industrial relations over the last 10 years. Thanks to the futuristic leadership of Mamta Energy, the state has successfully repositioned itself in the development of highway backed by strong social sector. Technology is one of the key focus areas for us. Our Honorable CM Mamta Banerjee's vision is not only to make West Bengal the information technology hub of India, but a renowned IT destination of the world. Our policy focuses mainly on big data analysis and discrimination, animation, and gaming, cyber securities, drones, artificial intelligence, quantum computing to a name, few names. She has promoted the Bengal Silicon Valley, a new town, a modern smart city with all amenities and entertainment facilities, just beside the Netaji Shivas Chandra Bose International Airport. The locational advantage of the Bengal Silicon Valley, perhaps the best in the country. Another 100 acres of land has been marked for extending the existing Silicon Valley in phase two. We have been receiving positive responses from the business community and the prospective foreign investors. A favorable trend in the apparent as some of the major corporate giants have signed a with state. Some eminent groups including the Reliance Industries, JSW Group, ITC Limited, Flipkart, Coca-Cola, to name a few. World largest e-commerce company, Amazon, has commenced operation by opening the FIP largest outlet in West Bengal. West Bengal is focusing on green energy with increasing use of solar power and CNG. It is one of the few Indian states with natural gas source and entities like Gale, WNGC, SROL, Great Eastern Energy, are operating in explosion, extraction, and distribution of natural gases. Notably, West Bengal has the highest number of MSMEs in the country, which it is progressive step towards global business expansion. West Bengal recognizes the need for uniform global standards, international set of laws, inclusive labor laws, and industrial courts. This will turn help in the reducing the non pecuniary cost associated with international trade. West Bengal has comprehended and fast adapted to this. Thank you, everyone. But before I conclude, I will again uh, convey my best wishes to the association members for taking initiative in a time when we need their support and cooperation and their members' support and cooperation. 
and I assure you by forming the high power committee headed by the chief minister, any problem, interdepartmental problem would be solved. And the meeting will be held in a, every month and the clearance will be done very quickly. So nobody, have, uh, those who have experiences delay in having clearances of the project in the past. I assure them it did not happen once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It is always very, very inspirational hearing you, sir. And uh, we get a lot of strength when you uh, come forward and you share and you uh, assure the industry of all the cooperation and the support. I would invite some last comments from Mr. Deepak, uh, uh, from Mr. Hiranandani. And uh, then, uh, Raviji, I would like you to say a little something before we finally say thank to Honorable Minister for his time. Uh, Partada, yeah. so once again, thank you so much, sir. And uh, we fully appreciate uh, the new community. There is a new excitement uh, uh, with a rejuvenated government and this massive victory. So we are all very excited to see things uh, move very fast and very far ahead. So thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Parthuda, for all the assurance. Uh, let me tell you that uh, we have forayed into steel few years back. And in last 10 years of your government, we have never faced a single day problem and lockdown issue or any unrest issue in our plant. So I can tell the forum uh, my own experience that uh, we are here in Bengal. We are working in Bengal. We are we are there in Bengal for last 35 years. And uh, we have a, a plant set up in Bengal for last 15 years. And since last 10 years, I can, I can uh, assure you people that there has not been a single day delay because of IR unrest or anything. The, uh, the the approach and the speed at uh, officers or at the department has also improved to a great extent. So we always had an assurance and comfort from all of you, be it ministers, be it officers, be it any department. And today your further assurance has rebuilt our confidence and we hope Bengal reach a greater height in years to come. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Minister, sir, many of our members talked and we would also like to share this uh, opportunity with uh, uh, to share the information with the audience here. Uh, Government of West Bengal Department of Skill Development is hosting a skill competition, West Bengal 2021, and we are honored and privileged that SOCHAM has been chosen as a partner for the competition this year. And it will be starting from somewhere from the September and 10th of the September is the final award ceremony. So we look forward to all the blessings of Honorable Minister and everyone who's here. Um, Minister, sir, thank you so much for being with us today and giving your valuable time to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dada. Thank you.